don't know what moderated caucus looks like. Um, if I were to stand up, I'd be like, motion for a moderated caucus um, for the purpose of humanitarian aid, or we talk about humanitarian aid throughout the entire moderated caucus. Um, five minutes of the total thing and 30 seconds speaking time, which means every person that goes after me, or I can just speak at the end, has a 30 second speaking time, and it extends for five minutes, if you guys know. Um, great. The chair would smile upon a motion to open debate. Yes, yeah. Motion to open debate. Um, all those in favor? Great. Great motion to the passage. Anthony is looking for a deal that would help strengthen um, the economies of Africa while still hopefully preventing um, any um, possible um, Genocide in Cambodia. Thank you. Um, reference delegate, I will talk like this when it's 10 seconds left, and then like just when you one minute is up. As the UK, we believe that more intervention in the area in the area is not a very good idea, since uh, we've seen what was happening in Vietnam, which has caused many deaths, and we believe that uh, more intervention will probably cause more uh, death and destruction. Cameroon's main goal, hopefully as all nations' main goal, is to prevent genocide. In the, in the area of Cambodia. In the United States, there is an imminent genocide in Cambodia. Um, the United States sees an intervention of a collective UN force to enter Cambodia to prevent the Khmer Rouge from committing genocide, which claims millions of Cambodian lives. Five minute moderate caucus, 30 seconds in time, I believe, from the US. All those in favor? Great. Pass unanimously. Along with having human rights violations, we can also put the Khmer Road leaders on earlier trials. So uh, any violations will not go through and they will all be stopped. Pol Pot took power yesterday, but we can already see that the West and the colonialist powers assume that he is that he is committing genocide. There is no evidence of this, yet it is assumed. Why? Because Cambodia is a developing nation. As a collective, we must intervene. Genocide has already been evidenced. As we speak, Pol Pot is forcing millions of people to leave their homes for the countryside. The signs of oncoming genocide are clear. So we need to set the agenda. So there are three questions um, that should be listed in your background guide. And um, these questions need to be answered in the form of a resolution. So you guys um, will vote on what order you want to answer these questions in, and our debate will follow that order. Taking in the U.S.'s point how this has happened before, we should send in some investigators to Cambodia to see if there's any violation going on already. We don't know anything yet. We have not seen any actions of violence or any actions of peace. All we've seen is a government change. Cambodia right now is falling apart and the Khmer Rouge is starting to rise. We need to prepare just in case if something starts to happen. China supports the style of government that Pol Pot has created, but we would be open to sending uh, peacekeepers uh, into under one condition. Uh, the United States withdraws all support and arms deals for Taiwan. If Pol Pot truly thinks that by starting a revolution and overthrowing the Cambodian government, he can create a better society for the Cambodian people, and we should let him do it because we, for one, have no proof that he has actually done anything wrong in the uh, for genocide. The UK believes that we shouldn't necessarily send in peacekeepers because that is sending in more violence to a unstable country. So we would rather send in jurists for the, this situation. The peacekeepers' sole jobs to check in, not start any violence. They will be 100% armed, unarmed. Um, in, in the bill that we're working on right now. We really want to check in. We have no proof that they want to commit a genocide or have already violated anything regarding human rights. We solely just want to check in, that's it. Okay, so Cambodia does not give the consent for uh, other people's, or other countries' troops to be sent in. So we would like to um, discuss the present treaty with um, sending peacekeepers into um, Cambodia and monitoring, monitoring for any sign of a genocide. If we saw levels of killing um, reaching 500 people for the casualties, 
he would send in um, forces effectively. Um, UN collective force to intervene and um, stop the agenda. Mayor of Tanzania would like to propose a deal in which um, the um, a force of UN peacekeepers based in China would be ready um, to be deployed into Cambodia upon any um, humanitarian crisis on the premise that the United States cuts um, um, all arms deals um, or aid to Taiwan in half, also um, increase for, and also increase foreign aid to Tanzania and other Afri um, developing countries in Africa. I, I tend to think that if, if we fund the, the government, we can we can have to be more stable and increase uh, and decrease likelihood that it will that it will uh, collapse again. Peacekeepers are a great idea. We believe that being able to check on how this nation is developing and what is going on since a new government just came into power is strongly in all of our interests as a country. But we do not believe we should take any military action until we have found out that there are genocides or human rights are being inflicted on. And to add on, we should be focusing on Cambodia specifically, not other issues, and that is why we have met today. We need to think about our countries and how um, our policies and our interests and how we can get a win-win for our country and the world. Uh, I'm looking for a five-minute one Yes. Okay. How does bringing in military to Cambodia prevent more murder and create peace if there's just going to be more deaths on both sides? Would either of the sponsors like to respond? We are not bringing in armed peacekeepers. First of all, they're peacekeepers, and second of all, they are not armed, and therefore they will not be hurting, they will not be attacking, they will not be uh, in acts of war. Uh, they are just interrogating, they are finding out and they are keeping peace. Thank you. Would 1,000 of the unarmed United Nations peacekeeper, peacekeepers be kept inside of uh, Cambodia, and would they be continuing the daily updates, and how would uh, Cambodia would respond to that. Yes, we definitely believe that should be the bill. Um, that 1,000 extra peacekeepers that will still be stationed in Cambodia will still be conducting the same exercises as before, as before but there will be less of them, and we will continuously uh, take out until there are no, no more peacekeepers left to ensure that Cambodia is safe and peaceful. Uh, guys, keep in mind that UN peacekeepers need to be invited into a country. They cannot enter a country without being invited in, which means you need to consider that Cambodian leaders might not want, especially being a new regime, they might not want UN peacekeepers infringing on their current rule. And so when drafting this bill, Keep in mind how you are going to convince them, and you guys are welcome to ask these questions. How are you going to convince the Cambodian new government who should have these new peacekeepers? Nobody has really defined um, what the peacekeepers are allowed to do or are not allowed to do. Um, what we propose is that we send in 3,000 peacekeepers and spread them out in, in Cambodia. And there will be more in the more populated areas and less in the less populated areas. They should be looking for any sign of Pol Pot violating human rights. They are allowed to go in public places, but they are not allowed to invade private property unless they have evidence that the people in there might be dangerous. A friendly amendment is when the sponsors of the original resolution agree with the amendment that is proposed. And so this is a friendly amendment, so it will automatically be merged with the resolution that has already been presented. Um, esteemed delegates, honorable chair, I am Cambodia coming to you to discuss this current resolution. And as peacekeepers need permission to enter my sovereign territory, but I would like to discuss with you what this resolution talks about and why I should agree to allow peacekeepers to enter my nation that I'm currently reforming and revamping its entire political system. These peacekeepers have no political influence on any of your people. They don't they don't talk to people, they don't no, have possible. any influence. There's nothing that could possibly affect the political state in your country. The only thing they do 
because they check in on what you're doing, make sure you're not killing anyone, and they provide you medical aid. So I tell this, but aren't these peacekeeping soldiers given to the UN by other countries? And so these soldiers come in with those countries' agendas in mind to then influence my sacred nation. And I do not want that kind of influence to be a part of my government. All we want to do is check in. We want to listen to you rather than force our opinions or enforce our methods on your government. So all we want to do is hear what you have to say and what you're going to do. And if you have anything related to genocide, then we will come in. But I am here right before you, a representative of Cambodia, telling my side of the story that we are under an oppressive government and we have now sprung up and risen up. Haven't all of you countries risen up and that's why you're your great nation today? Because you are revolutionaries who have come to speak for the people and I am speaking for my people. And having this government, that this new outside force of several different governments come and play with my party's agenda, with our people's agenda and our people's right to freedom, it's not something that you no can upon. And a co-delegate has not come The foundational principle of the United Nations is sovereign equality. Cambodia just recently gained its independence from colonial powers, just as Mauritania, Tanzania, Cameroon, and many other countries here today did. From that principle, there is no requirement that we submit our government or our means of government to a check to the United Nations, especially when the United Nations comes bearing weapons. We've already fought many wars. The United States has tried to disastrously impose its will on our neighbor, and there is no reason whatsoever that we should accept or agree with the United, the United Nations sending in more colonial forces when we can govern ourselves, and we want the opportunity to do that just as every other state here has had. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, smile upon points or motions. To second, please monitor or find out about 500 athletes um, in Cambodia. Then um, we will take action and deploy a um, force in order to prevent more casualties from happening. If after one year no signs of genocide are apparent, pe the peacekeepers will be pulled back. If Cambodia, Cambodia refuses to accept peacekeepers, sanctions will be enacted on all goods and military intervention authorized against those that would that break blockade. All in favor of the first resolution, please raise your flag. This is with the amendment. Are there any vetoes? This resolution passes. The reason why this peacekeeper operation is warranted is because of Cambodian, uh, the Cambodian government's alarming change of pace and how you've seen in the past how uh, stuff like this has caused genocide. Then we aren't saying that it will happen to Cambodia, we are saying that we don't want it to. A realistically a resolution like this would have taken months and that would have been fairly junior people but the way these generally work, which is not the process you guys chose, it is it starts with a broad agreement of basic principles. So you have something where you say, for example, the Khmer Rouge government is a threat to national peace and security, which means the Security Council should do something. And then from there, you work into what they should do. So you guys focused a lot on peacekeeping. I'm not entirely sure why, but one of the tools that I think you overlooked was the Security Council can request investigations of countries and what's going on. <laughs> oh wait, really? Yeah. So a lot of what it, it seemed like that's what you guys were going for with uh, unarmed peacekeepers kind of just reporting on things. But the Security Council also doesn't need permission of the host government to do that. Oh. And they can ask for <laughs> oh. they can ask for a report either by another body in the United Nations or a subsidiary organ of the Security Council. But yeah, I think it was bottom, I think it was worthwhile for you guys just to try to hash things out and argue and debate and think. You know, I mean, initially you focused on building coalitions and thought everything is great, we've got this now, and then you realized how fickle coalitions are and how much the devil is really in the detail. <laughs>